Welcome to another House of Prayer online ministry. I am one of your pastors, Pastor Harris out of Michigan. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for Apostle John out of Texas. Today, we're going to talk about, it's not about you. It is not about you. We're going to be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. It is not about you. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. You alone, Lord, are worthy. You are awesome. We thank you for allowing us to be here one more day to worship you in spirit and truth. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tear down our flesh and allow your spirit to rise, taking dominion over our voice, over our speech. God allows us to be the first partaker of your word. We love you. We adore you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is not about you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8 reads as follows. Wherefore, I beseech ye that ye would confirm your love toward him. Speaking of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. We'll read it again. Wherefore, I beseech ye that you would confirm your love towards him, meaning God. Demonstrate your love towards God. Sacrificing your love towards God. Understanding that it's not about you. You know, once we understand that it's not about us, we can affirm our love. We can confirm our love to God by loving our neighbors, which is one of the commandments. Love your neighbors, you know, like you love yourself. So therefore, if you have a neighbor that's going through, you go over there and you have compassion for that neighbor. You don't go over there thinking about yourself, thinking about what you could do and how you could gain fame and fortune and glory. You go over there in compassion and concern with your neighbor. It is not about you. How many times have we ever been in a situation where God allows us the opportunity to witness to someone and they're going through their marriage or they're going through a spouse or a sister or brother or child past or something. And instead of us being there, um, comforting that person, we're there thinking about ourselves. You know, I know you guys have been in situations just like I have. You know, I know you, my brothers and sisters, have been in situations just like I have, where you're going through and you're grieving. And instead of your family members or your friends being there for you, they turn it around and make it about them. It is not about you at that time. It's about you consoling that person. You know, when you were going through your grieving stage, somebody consoled you. You know, it's not about you when it's time for somebody lost their job and they just need a voice to listen to. And, uh, you know, they come and they want to talk to you. You ever talk to somebody and you're trying to tell them about your problems that you're going through and all of a sudden it turn it around like it's all about them. And you have find yourself sitting there witnessing to them and saying, you know, God is able. And then you think about, you know what, Lord, I, it wasn't even about me at that time. You know, even though they should have been there comforting me and being concerned about me, you turn that thing around, Jesus, and you let me um, comfort them. You let me confirm my love for you by thinking about their situation and what they were going through. It is not about you. And that's what we have to understand. I learned that years ago. It's not about me. The trials and tribulations that you're going through, some of the situations that you're in right now, And you're probably thinking to yourself, Lord, I haven't done anything wrong. I don't understand. I've done everything you've told me to do. I prayed. I fasted. I gave my children to you. I'm living right. I'm saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. And I'm in this wilderness, God. And it seems like that this situation will never get up. I'm like, God, you ain't forget about me, God. You know, Lord, I'm here, child. I'm your child, God. God said, I see you. But understand right now, it's not about you. You're going through for someone else. You're going through praising and worshiping me so that others can see that although you're in the storm, although the heat is turned up 10 times hotter, you realize and you understand that it is not about you at this time. It's about me getting glory out of your life. And that's why we have to understand it is not about us. Like 2 Corinthians 2, verse 8 says, Wherefore I beseech you, I beg you, that you would confirm your love toward God. How can you confirm your love toward God unless you give yourself to God? Unless you get in his word every day. Unless you're on your knees praying. 
You may say, I can't get down on my knees, Pastor Harris. My knees hurt. My knees this. It's okay. You can sit on the side of the bed and pray. Prayer is one of the most avoided things that people do unless they need something or they get in a bad situation. And then you want to start praying to God. I beseech you. I beg you, brothers and sisters, to understand it is not about you. Put down yourself and set yourself to the side for a minute, rather. Excuse me. Set yourself to the side for a minute. And think about somebody else. You know, think about those people. We hear people start talking about they in Africa and they hungry. Well, they right here hungry in America. You look up, go down the street. Look out the back door. Some of us don't live too far from a ghetto. Or some of us don't live too far from an area that's poverty. Or perhaps you're in poverty, but God's finding favor on your life. That's the time for you to understand. It's not about you. Go out and feed somebody else. It is not about you. Okay, you're fixing this big dinner for your family and friends and loved one. You're sacrificing and then you get an ache and a pain in your knee. Rebuke that demon, the blood of Jesus. I'm going on in Jesus name because God, it is not about me. It's about the people of God right now, Lord. I've got to feed your people. I've got to be there for the people, God. There's anointing on my life that you've called me to sacrifice my own desires and be there for your people. It is not about you. Let's understand that. Let's be there for one another and understand it's not about you. You're on that job and you're saying, God, I'm on that job. Lord, how long I got to sit on this job? Every time I turn around, they backbite me. They talking about me. They scandalizing my name. Lord, they got a dagger in my back. Lord, I'm just in pain. Lord, I'm praying. I just went to church and I prayed, God. I prayed what God said. When you prayed and the pastor preached and the word you heard, should have got you through that week. So when that dagger came, you wasn't surprised because you've been praying and you've been in the book. And the Bible lets you know that when you're my child, I'm going to allow Satan to bother you. I'm going to allow him to come in your circle. I'm going to allow him to come into your life because I want to purge you because I know there's something inside of you that I want to use for the people to be um, called in, thank you, Jesus, so that the people can hear my voice in you and I can't do that unless I tear down your flesh. Because the spirit of God and the flesh does not mix. God deals in spirit and truth, not flesh and feelings. It is not about you. We see that people go on that Facebook and they're on there and they're looking for people to give them self-pity. Oh, woe is me. I broke up with this and I broke up with that and I'm going through and I'm this and I'm that. And then you pray for me, y'all. And then the people get back on that. I'm praying, sister. Them prayers ain't got off the ground half the people. They're not praying for you. They don't even know you. Some of them are mocking you. And you just putting your situation out there for those people to mock you. Instead of calling on the prayer warriors in your family or calling on the prayer warriors that's in the church. Everybody knows somebody that prayed for them. You know, perhaps it was your grandmama and she's gone on to be with Jesus and she's made her transition. You get down on your knees and you talk to God. And you say, God, just like you was there for my grandmother, I know you can be there for me, God. She's going on in transition, God. And I feel like she's the only person that understood me. She's the only person that cared for me. She's the only person that loved me. But God, she told me about a man named Jesus. And I'm going to take you, God, all the way because I know you said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. That's when you set yourself to the side and you realize it's not about you. Just like grandmama realized it wasn't about her. And when she was praying and she was getting up sacrificing those mornings, she was raising your children because you was on the street running around doing everything that you wasn't supposed to be doing. Grandma was there for you. Granddad was there for you. Aunt was there for you. Uncle was there for you. A godmama was there for you. A stepdad was there for you. A stepmother was there for you. You know, and they realized it wasn't about them. Well, it's time for you to be there for somebody else. It is not about you. Confirm your love with, for God. Confirm your sacrifice for God by doing things that God would have for you to do in the word of God, loving your neighbor, being compassionate about other people's problems and situations. You know, you sit there and you listen to somebody else and all of a sudden you start thinking about yourself. Rebuke your flesh and learn how to be a good listener. It's not about you. That's not the time. When people come to me and they say, you know, my husband passed and I'm going through, I've learned to listen. 
I'm going to start telling me what well, passed. My husband, Dr. Harris, passed November 15, 2015. And, um, you know, I'm going through also. And woe is me. And I'm this and I'm that. That's not the time. That's the time for me to shut my mouth. Ask God to give me words of wisdom to encourage this person right now while they're going through. Because during the time that I was going through, when my husband first got called into God and made his transition, there were people praying for me. They were lifting up my uh, my family. You know, they were calling on Jesus for me and my family. And God began to comfort us during that time. And so he began to deliver us during that time. You know, no, it's not easy. But I've learned to take it one day at a time. And that's what I tell them. One day at a time. Give God praise one day at a time. He'll give you strength. He'll give you what you need to endure the storm. One day at a time. And know that it's not about you. While you're doing one day at a time. God, I thank you for one more day. In this day that you've given me, who would you have for me to witness to? Who would you have for me to um, be a blessing to? Who would you have for me to call and encourage? Not, Lord, I thank you for this one more day. Oh, I get to do this. I get to do this. I get to do this. It's not about you. Understand it's not about you. When you understand it's not about you, you'll find out that God will be there for you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You'll be able to see that because he said it in his word. But some of us can't see it. Because we're so busy licking our wounds. I remember when I was going through so hard and I was talking to somebody about it. And all of a sudden, instead of her being there saying, you know what? I understand. I'm going to pray for you right now. All of a sudden, she started talking about herself. She started talking about what she was doing 20 years ago. And what this and what was this and what was this? It wasn't a testimony about how God delivered her, how God healed her. It started being about her. And so I was like, you know what, Lord, I need to be witnessing to her, encouraging her. You know, And when I started doing that, I forgot about what I was going through. At that moment, I realized it wasn't about me. It was about me encouraging somebody. And while I was encouraging her, somebody was praying for me. Somebody with a, a righteous heart. You know, the Bible lets us know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. God got some prayer warriors out there that's praying for us and we don't even know about it. They're lifting up our names. So why don't you lift up somebody else's name in prayer? So we all can be healed and delivered and God can be glorified. At the end of the day, it's all about Jesus and drawing in souls to him. It's not about me. It's not about you. So you're going through some marital problems. So you got some marital situations, you know, so what? Somebody else going through something worse. Thank God for it. The, the thing that you have a spouse. Thank God for the fact that you have a mate here. Somebody would love to have their husband or their wife still here. And God didn't call them on in. Stop being selfish and understand it's not about you. Start being a blessing to someone else. When God blesses you and you give him that 10%, I pray that you give him that 10%. How about taking another 10% and blessing somebody else with it? How about that? How about planting seeds in someone else's life? Because everything belongs to God. The other 90% you got belongs to him too. So acknowledge him. A lot of us are in a debt situation right now because we mishandled God's money. And we didn't know it wasn't about us. We thought it was about us. Excuse me. You took that little refund check when you got it. And you was like, hey, went shopping and spent it. And now you don't have nothing. And you're mad at your family members because they won't pay your rent. They won't give you no money for your light bill or your gas bill or your phone bill. But what about when you got that refund back in February? Or perhaps you got an instant refund and you took that um that rapid refund that they got. Thank you, Jesus. And you got it in January, end of January. And then all of a sudden by March, you don't have none. And you're mad at everybody else because when they got their refund, you know, they're using it wisely. They didn't invite me. They didn't ask me. It's not about you. You had the opportunity to be a blessing to somebody and you weren't. You were selfish with the gifts that God gave you. And now you want to, somebody to be a blessing to you? Learn how not to be selfish and perhaps somebody can be a blessing to you. Some of us walking around here with our hands so tight, can nothing come in and can nothing go out of it. It's not about you. You're selfish with God's money. You're selfish with the blessings that you have. And when you learn how to share with the people of God, and you learn how to share and understand that it's not about you, then you'll continually receive God's blessings. 
I'm not going to put my 10% in that church. Some of us say, I hear the spirits. I'm not putting my 10%. They don't, I don't know what they're doing with my money. It's not your money. It's not your money. You let God deal with the pastor. You let God deal with the preachers and the elders and the mothers and the trustees. And if they're mishandling that money, that's God's business. God knows how to chase his children. He don't need us digging in his business. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's about lifting up the name of Jesus. Why don't you give it a try and understand it's not about you. Just like in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and 8. Wherefore, I beseech you, I beg you, brothers and sisters, that you would confirm your love, confirm your love toward God by sacrificing your own thoughts and your own feelings and your own desires. Be a blessing to someone else and realize and understand that it's not about you. God bless you. I thank God for each and every one of you. Continue to tune in to the House of Prayer online ministry www.houseofprayerministry.com